Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're gonna be dealing with this function right here. And we wanna do two things here. We wanna find the solutions to this function. And then we wanna go ahead and graph this function. And the graph I'm talking about is a very, very, very basic sketch because you can have all sorts of level levels of detail uh, in your graph. So I'm talking about the most basic, basic sketch. Now, it is important that you know how to um, uh, graph things in a more detailed manner, but in this particular problem, I'm just looking for a basic sketch. So if you think you can solve this problem, go ahead and put your answer uh, answers into the comment section. Of course, you're only gonna be able to put your solutions into the comment section because we can't put that graph in there, but you can certainly take out a piece of paper and a pencil and sketch this thing real quick if you know what you're doing. Now, um, what type of function are we dealing with? Okay, so just in case those of you out there don't know how to get this problem started, uh, we have two binomials. If you were to use the FOIL method and multiply this, you'll see that we'll end up with a quadratic equation. So we're dealing with a quadratic function there. Okay, so that's a bit of a hint on what's going on. So of course, I'm gonna show you the uh, correct uh, answer in graph in just one second, then I'm gonna walk through the solution step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below and if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. And I'm talking about a very basic sketch and the solutions because the solutions are actually on the graph. All right, so the solutions are actually x equals negative six and three. Now it's, uh, this is kind of uh, written kind of uh, really tight here because I wanted to condense this graph in, but this is a negative six and three. And this 36, negative 36 is just the y-intercept. What I'm looking for, um, in terms of a graph is just a basic parabola that uh, shows me that yes, you know how to um, that this the graph of this function is a parabola. It's u-shaped and it's uh, crossing through the x-axis at the point of these uh, solutions, which of course is three and negative six. So that tells me that you understand that the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. It can either look like this or like this. And anywhere where this parabola chops through the x-axis is uh, what we call real number solutions. Okay, so we have two real number solutions here. And in our function, our quadratic function right here, as I kind of you know told you, oh, if we multiply this together, we're going to end up with a quadratic equation. And of course, I'm going to explain exactly how we solve these quadratic equations. But one thing you need to know, kind of big picture, is that all quadratic equations will have two solutions, either two real number and or imaginary complex numbers. But in this case, uh, anytime our graph chops through the x-axis, we're talking about real number solutions. So hopefully all this is making sense. Now, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you definitely need to understand this. So if you're already kind of confused, you might want to check out like my algebra one course for additional help. But basically, again, if you had your parabola, something like this, you're like, oh, here's the solutions. I'm going to just draw my parabola like so. You do need one other reference point so you understand where this parabola is at. But um, again, in terms of a, uh, the sketch, you can have a much more detailed sketch here. You can have the axis of symmetry, which I'm not going to get into in this particular video. And you can also have the vertex. All this is very important for sure, but I just want to make sure you can um, understand, hey, the basic graph here is a parabola going through these two points. Okay, so if you got this right, well, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and a plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know a, a thing or two about quadratic functions and parabolas. They'll be very impressed with that information. They'll be like, wow, you're awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And uh, when we're solving um, or looking for the solutions for um, a polynomial function, okay, there's another word uh, for solutions. Let's kind of write this down. Sometimes you hear the word zeros or roots Okay, these are solutions. Uh, we're also talking about x-intercepts, real number solutions. But these words right here, find the zeros, find the roots. Uh, for those of you out there that um, 
are familiar with the rational root um, theorem, we're talking about roots, right? Or find the zeros. So we're really talking about finding the solutions to this equation. So what we want to do is take our function, okay, whatever it is, and set it equal to zero, okay? Now, what does that mean graphically? Well, here, if we look um, at our graph, our parabola, we're looking at where this function right here, here's the, the, the graph represents, uh, uh, is the graphical representation of that function. We're looking at the points of where it crosses through uh, the x-axis, okay, where y is equal to zero, okay? So here, our function f of x is the same thing as y. Now, again, if you're kind of confused about what I'm talking about, this is um, algebra stuff that you should know. So y is equal to f of x. This is a function. This right here, technically, I would call this a quadratic function. If I took the f of x out and I just had y, this would be a quadratic equation, but basically it's more or less the same thing, right? Just kind of different terminology. But if I'm saying, hey, uh, what, let's set let y equal to zero. Well, if y is equal to this, we'll set that equal to zero. So again, when you're dealing with polynomial functions and you're looking for uh, solutions, uh, the zeros, the roots, real number solutions, or any uh, solutions for that, you want to take that function and set it equal to zero. Okay. All right. So with that being said, uh, this problem is super easy. Okay. Because at uh, here, this quadratic um, equation is already factored for us. We have this binomial times this binomial. So we have one thing here, okay, being multiplied by another thing here, and the answer is zero. If I told you, hey, I have two numbers, and when I take these two numbers, I multiply them together, and I get zero as my answer, okay? What would that tell you about these two numbers, right? Let's say I have a number A and B. When I multiply these numbers A and B together, I get zero. What does that tell me about A or B? Well, you can't get zero as your answer unless one or both of these numbers are zero. Okay, this is a very important uh, property in algebra. It's called the zero product property. And we love to use it because it makes solving these um, equations super easy. Okay, so this times this is equal to zero. That means this and or this um, is in fact themselves equal to zero. So what we need to do is set each one of these linear factors. That's what we would uh, refer to these as. We're going to set these equal to zero and solve for x. All right, so you can see the basic algebra here. 2x plus 12 is equal to zero. I'm going to move that 12 to the side. I get 2x is equal to negative 12. Divide both sides equation by 2. Again, x is equal to negative 6. And then here, I just uh, simply have to move that 3 to the other side. Again, x is equal to 3. Again, I know that I'm dealing with a quadratic equation. I'm looking for two solutions. And there you go. x is equal to neg negative 6. And x is equal to 3. All right, so uh, right off the bat, uh, you, you already know the two places on a graph that on the x-axis that our parabola is going to go uh, through, okay? Now, well, the only thing we don't know at this point is whether this is going to be a right side happy parabola or a sad parabola. In other words, if it's going to go down like this or it's going to go up like this, the quickest way to determine that, okay, is to look at the leading coefficient. So when I take this 2x and I multiply by x, I'm going to end up with a 2x squared, a positive. Now, and now I'm not even going to multiply the rest but, um, out. All I need to know is this, that 2x times this x is going to be a positive 2x. It's going to be positive. That's what I need to know. So when you have a positive leading term, in other words, your highest power here is positive, it's going to be a happy or a positive parabola. If this was negative, it would be a sad parabola. It wouldn't be happy to be a parabola, but in this case, we know we're going to have a parabola that looks like this, okay? So it's going to have this shape, and it's going to cross through our x-intercepts, um, our zeros, our roots, our solutions to this quadratic equation. So that right there uh, is enough to actually come up with a quick sketch. But here's the deal, right? We can do one other thing to uh, kind of like spruce up our, our uh, sketch here. Now, without even finding the vertex and all that other stuff, I know that my parabola, my happy parabola is gonna cross through these two points. So 
Now here from negative six to three, okay, how many, uh, what's the distance between negative six to three? So just to kind of do, do some, let's do some like mental math here, right? So we have three here and six there, we're talking about nine, right? So, uh, so between nine, okay, we want to split that distance in half. So basically when you're sketching something, you don't want to, you know, have your, you want to show your math teacher that you know what you're doing. In other words, your parabola needs to be symmetric. You don't want to, you know, have it look like, you know, something like this here. I'm trying to really mess up. It's hard for me to do something like that or something like, uh, it goes like this, you know, parabolas are symmetric. Okay. So in other words, you want to be thinking about the axis of symmetry. Again, you don't need to go um, every single time. Your teacher doesn't need a really detailed graph, but you can just kind of split the distance and be thinking about that. Now, the next thing that we can do, so we know our parabola is going to be something like that. One thing we can find is the y-intercept right here. The y-intercept is so easy to find. The y-intercept, if you notice our graph, is where x is going to be equal to zero. So here x is three, here is two, one, and then we're zero. So when x is zero, that's where we can find our y-intercept. So like it's super easy to calculate the y-intercept. We'll just let x is equal to zero. So here in these x's, we'll plug in zero uh, real quick. Uh, and then that'll tell us what uh, y will be, which of course will be the y-intercept. So two times zero is right here, zero. So that'll be uh, 2 times 0, 0 plus 12, so this would be 12, and then 0 minus 3, so 0 minus 3 is negative 3, so 12 times negative 3 is negative uh, 36. Super easy, that is negative 36 is the y-intercept. Okay, so now I can spruce up my graph here. I know that in between here is going to be my... Um, kind of axis of symmetry okay now i can again get more detailed about this but i can put this point right there negative 36 i know my parabola is going to go way down and cross through the y-axis here and it's going to go a little bit more okay to um uh, kind of get to that axis of symmetry and then do a turn okay so when you come up with these basic sketch sketches you know you want to put in some reference points you know the the, the more uh, points you put in, critical points you put in on your graph, the happier your teacher will be. But again, they just want to make sure you understand the connection between the graph and the solutions. Um, again, you know, finding the vertex axis of symmetry, that's important as well, but it's not always necessary in every single problem. Okay, so hopefully this video helped you out. Uh, this is stuff that you certainly need to know if you are taking Algebra 1 and uh, above. Um, another thing, too, I would say on a, uh, as an aside, for those of you that are taking Algebra 1 or going into Algebra 2, you want to be thinking about getting yourself a graphing calculator, something like a TI-83, TI-84. Those are great calculators. Uh, and start learning how to use your graphing calculator. So I get into all that in my courses as well. So if you need help with any of this, check out any one of my Algebra courses, Algebra 1, Algebra 2. All depends on what level of math you're at. But if this particular video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.